There is absolutely nothing better than finding some freshly hatched baby geckos. They're just so cute. Look at them all curled up and sleeping. Oh my goodness. Look at how small they are. Today, we are going to be talking about my baby Malaysian cat geckos. As you all just saw, I had two baby cat geckos hatch recently. So I figured that this would be a good time to finally do a video just completely dedicated to my my baby cat geckos because not only do I have those two babies that just hatched, I currently have 11 other baby geckos, so I have a total of 13 baby cat geckos right now. So in this video, I want to show you all how I've been caring for my 13 baby geckos and we're going to be setting up some new enclosures for the new ones that just hatched. And yeah, I, I don't really know what else to say. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out all the baby geckos. Okay, so this shelf over here is where I keep all of my baby cat geckos. Now, as you can see, there is a total of eight enclosures in here, but only six of them actually have cat geckos in them. One of them houses my baby crested gecko, and then one of them is just an empty enclosure. It used to be for Josh's mountain horn dragon Zuko, but Zuko recently got an enclosure upgrade so there is just one empty enclosure on here now. So not counting the two baby cat geckos that just hatched, I currently have 11 baby cat geckos housed in these enclosures. Well, I actually only have 10 in these enclosures. We'll talk about the 11th one shortly. So as I mentioned, only six of these enclosures house cat geckos and there's a total of 10 cat geckos housed throughout those six enclosures. Some of my cat geckos are being raised solitary in their own enclosure and some of them I've been raising as groups. I've basically just been doing this because there's not a whole lot of information out there about raising baby cat geckos because not many people have bred them before so I'm kind of experimenting a bit to see if I notice any differences between the ones that are raised on their own versus the ones that are being raised in a group. So with that said let's go ahead and talk about the 11th cat gecko. Alright so I actually have a baby cat gecko that I've raised in one of these tiny little deli cups for the past two months. The reason why I raised this gecko in a little deli cup here is because this gecko hatched out incredibly small. It was not really thriving for the first few weeks. It wasn't really eating. The gecko dropped its tail and honestly I just didn't have high hopes for this gecko. It was not doing well. I did have the baby gecko in a larger enclosure at first but I ended up moving them into this smaller container very fast after I noticed that they just weren't thriving and thankfully the gecko has done so much better ever since and it is so much healthier now it's gained some weight so now that this gecko is just doing so much better I think that it's time to finally give them an enclosure upgrade and give them some more space so we're gonna go ahead and set up a new enclosure for this gecko right here and I'm also going to set up an enclosure for these two new geckos right here so these two geckos I decided I will be raising as a pair so I'm only going to be setting up one enclosure for the two of them. So these are the enclosures that I'm going to be setting up for the baby geckos. The smaller one over here will be for the gecko that's living on its own and then the larger one right here will be for the geckos that I'm raising as a pair. These are the types of enclosures that I use for all of my baby cat geckos and they honestly work really well for me. Okay so here is how I set up the baby gecko enclosure. So if we take a look in here you can see that there is a couple pieces of like cork bark piled together. I put a little bit of um, Philodendron Brazil over here and then I have a few branches throughout the enclosure with a small little water dish over here. So this here gives the gecko plenty of spaces to hide in. It has lots of room to climb and as you can see I also choose to use a loose substrate. So I do this for a few reasons. When I had my first baby cat geckos I tried raising them on paper towel and I quickly learned that I just don't think it was ideal for the geckos and I've had a lot more success using a loose substrate for a few reasons. Overall I find that these geckos just do best when kept in a really naturalistic environment so having a loose substrate lets you grow live plants which is definitely beneficial to the animals. The other reason I like to use loose substrate is because it allows me to put things like springtails and isopods in here which is actually a really good food source for these baby geckos. 
Obviously for the babies, you don't want to use anything very big, but species like dwarf whites or dwarf purple are an excellent food source for the baby geckos. So that is honestly the main reason why I like to have a loose substrate. So then I can add isopods into their enclosures. So yeah, so here's a look at the first one here. And then over here, it's pretty similar, <laughs> just a bit bigger. You can see I have a little coconut hide over there. I have a couple pieces of bark. Again, I have some philodendron Brazil and a few branches. And then we also have the little water dish over there. So let's go ahead and add our geckos into their enclosures. You're being very squirmy. Look at how cute it is. Oh my goodness. So as you can see, this one did drop its tail. It happened like three days after it hatched out of the egg, but it's grown back. We got a little, we got a little nub going and a very, very, very cute gecko. You're getting an upgrade. I can't get over how cute this one's face is. Oh my gosh. You are just the cutest little gecko ever. I know that this enclosure here is not very big, but like, look at how little the gecko is. Oh my gosh, so precious. Okay, and now let's get these two little babies moved into their enclosure. As you can see, there's also two more eggs in here. I haven't really addressed that at all, but yeah, there's two more eggs. These ones should be hatching with in the like next month or so, more likely three-ish weeks, but yeah, these eggs should be hatching soon, but for now, let's, let's focus on the babies that have already hatched. Go ahead and just gently pick up the babies here. There we go. And then I'm just gonna move it right into the enclosure here. There you go. Enjoy your new home. And now let's get your sibling. And there we go, both geckos have been added into their new home. They're so precious. I can't get over how tiny they are. I've had so many of these geckos hatched now and every single time I'm just still amazed at how small they are. So now that those three baby geckos are in their new homes, I wanna go ahead and check on all of my other baby cat geckos and kinda introduce them all to you, give you guys some updates on them, you know, all that fun stuff. Cat geckos are pretty shy reptiles. They're not an animal that you see out and about very frequently. I only really ever see my cat geckos if I come in my reptile room really late at night after all of the lights have gone out. That's the only time I really see them out. Other than that, if I want to check on them, I have to physically go and dig through their enclosures and look for them. So I very frequently come in here at nighttime to do a quick check on all of my cat geckos. But when it comes to the babies, I also like to physically take them out of their enclosures like once every week or two just to make sure that they are all nice and healthy so let's go ahead and do that this is what it looks like every time I check on my cat geckos I always just take all of the enclosures out and put them on the floor and put them back when I'm done I don't know why but this is the method that works for me so I'm actually going to go ahead and start with some geckos here that have not really been introduced on my channel much and these are the only geckos here that like I had no involvement at all in their breeding. These ones I actually purchased from a breeder in Europe and they're actually a different species from my other cat geckos. So my other cat geckos are a felinus and these ones here are a dorsalis and I actually have three of them. So all three of my dorsalis are currently baby geckos and they're nowhere near breeding size yet but my goal is to hopefully breed these guys in the future along with the felinus so that would be really cool and as you can see they are they're very jumpy geckos which is why i like to handle them right over their enclosure as i said though i do have a total of three of these guys so let's find the other ones here's one right here so here's one of the other baby dorsalis and now as you can see this one here does have a very short tail and that is because this one did drop its tail a little while back it just happened when I was handling it one time so that was kind of my fault but thankfully the tail is growing back nice and healthy and the gecko is also nice and healthy I mean I don't really know what else to say and here is the third one so you can see that these ones in comparison to the felinus have like 
a white line down their back, whereas the Felinus have a more like spot-like pattern. I mean, you'll see soon when we take a look at the other babies. So as you can tell with my dorsalis geckos, I was clearly raising those guys as a group. And now this enclosure here houses my group of Felinus geckos. So like the dorsalis, there is also three geckos in here. So let's go ahead and find these guys. You can see one sleeping right in the leaves right there. They're so cute, oh my gosh. Okay, so here's one of my baby Philinus geckos. And now this one here is about three months old. If I have learned anything from breeding these guys, it is that they grow very slow. They are not at all a fast growing species, but even though they are slow growers, they definitely do grow at a pretty steady pace. So as you can see, this gecko compared to the dorsalis that you just saw has a much more like detailed pattern on the back. It's more spotted. And yeah, where the dorsalis just have that like stripe down their back. Something that's really cool though is I've noticed that the cat geckos have so much variation between the individuals. You can see this one here has some white spots on its tail and as I show you some of the other babies you'll get to see that they really do have entirely different patterns. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this gecko back and we will take out the others. Okay so here is the next one and you know I love all of the babies but I am honestly obsessed with this one. This one is such a gorgeous rusty red color and it has beautiful white spots on its tail. I am just really really in love with this one's color and pattern. I think it's so pretty. Like look at how beautiful that one is. Oh my gosh. I mean they're all so beautiful but this one's color is just so nice. And here is the third gecko from the enclosure and this one this one has a little bit of an attitude. He's very fast and very jumpy so I'm gonna go ahead and put him back. So two of the geckos that live in this enclosure are clutch mates and then the third one is actually the clutch mate of the very tiny gecko that I was talking about earlier that dropped its tail and wasn't doing too well at first but yeah so there's three geckos in here. Okay so this gecko here is the oldest of all of the baby cat geckos that I currently have and I mean as you can see it is quite a bit bigger than the other ones that I have showed you already. So this gecko here I am most likely going to be keeping for myself and I'm going to be giving this gecko an upgraded enclosure very soon. Now a lot of people always ask me if I'm selling my baby cat geckos and I guess the answer is kind of yes and no. I've actually already sold two baby cat geckos including this one's clutch mate right here. It went to my friend Natasha but I don't currently have any for sale yet because I need to wait until I have more that I can sex but I have already sold two cat geckos and eventually Eventually, I will have some more for sale. As you can see, this one has a really nice dark color and it has some faint white spots on its tail and this one is also incredibly calm. <laughs> I say that right as it jumps off my hand. But yeah, for the most part, this gecko is incredibly calm. I assume that's just because of the fact that it is a captive bred animal that I've had since pretty much it hatched out of the egg. So I think it is just fairly used to me and used to handling versus like most wild caught cat geckos. Okay, so here is this cat gecko right here. And now this one is super interesting to me because it it is so dark and it has like no white on it at all. As you probably remember, a lot of the other babies had white spotting on their tail, but this one here just has a completely dark brown stripe down its tail and even its pattern on its back is really dark and it has this like dark brown stripe down the middle of its back. So I think that this cat gecko is really, really interesting because it's just so unique from the other ones. Like I mentioned earlier, I've noticed that there's just so much variation when it comes to the individual cat gecko. It's really interesting to me. This one here is also quite jumpy and quite flighty. So again, I, I handle it over the enclosure because I know that he's probably gonna jump. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this stuff back and we can uh, take a look at some more geckos. What would you know? I have another gecko right here. Again, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, this is another one of my baby cat geckos here. Once again, this one's pattern is just so unique from the rest. The patterning on this one's back is so bold. And again, there's no white on this one's tail at all. It's just a complete 
dark brown stripe. I don't know, I really love the pattern on this one's back. It's it's very, very interesting to me. I apologize that none of these baby geckos have names. I hope that's not too confusing or anything. I just like haven't really bothered to name any of them yet because I don't entirely know which ones I'm going to be keeping and which ones I'm going to be selling. So I feel like there's no point in really naming them until I've decided that it's going to be a gecko I keep or something. So yeah, hopefully it's not too confusing that I don't really have anything else to refer to them as other than baby cat geckos. This gecko here is also by far one of the most docile baby cat geckos I have. Literally every single time I take this one out, she just starts crawling all over me in such a calm and curious way. Like it's very clear to me that this gecko is like not stressed out at all, especially when I compare it to some of the other baby cat geckos that so obviously don't like handling. This one here is just so chill. I love this gecko. I don't know for sure yet, but I have a feeling that this one here will likely end up being a keeper for me. Okay, and this here is our last container. So this is going to be the last baby gecko that we are being introduced to today. And ta-da, there they are. So this one, like its sibling that I showed you earlier, is also just very dark with very little color, anything on it. Again, there's no white spots on this one's tail. It's just like a completely dark brown tail and very minimal patterning on the back. So now that you guys have seen every baby cat gecko I have, I'm hoping you guys can see just how much much color variation and pattern variation there is from gecko to gecko. It's super interesting to me and you know it definitely makes me wonder if like in the future when I have more geckos if selective breeding is going to be possible to breed for specific colors and patterns and stuff. I mean I don't know but maybe one day I'll find out. I think that that would be really really cool. So now when it actually comes down to caring for my baby geckos their care routine is actually quite simple. One of the most important things for these animals is making sure that they stay hydrated and making sure that their humidity stays quite high. So these baby geckos get a good mist every single night before bed. I pretty much never ever skip a night misting them. I think that it is really important that they get a good mist every single night to both provide them with drinking water and to also just give them the high humidity levels that they need. And then for food, I like to feed my geckos some small crickets a few times a week. I don't like to feed them every single day. I find if I feed them every day or sometimes even every other day that the crickets just will start, you know, kind of piling up in the enclosure because the gecko just won't eat them and then I just have to remove them. So I typically will only feed the baby geckos every two or every three days and I typically will give them like three to four crickets at a time per gecko. Like I said earlier, I am still very much experimenting with their care. So, you know, I definitely don't feel like I know everything about raising and cat geckos, I am very much still learning. Like I mentioned throughout the video, I am raising some of my cat geckos in a group and I'm raising some of them as just a single gecko to see if that has any difference on their growth and stuff. And I'm also raising some of them with UVB and some of them without UVB, again, to see if that has any effect on things. So, you know, as I continue to experiment with different care methods and as I continue to learn different things, I will start to feel more comfortable in giving like care advice for them. But for now, I just wanna share with you what I'm doing, but just know that like I am no expert or anything. This is my first year breeding cat geckos. I'm very much learning as I go and I just want to kind of share that process with everyone. So there you go. There is all 13 of my baby cat geckos and their enclosures, updates on them. I don't really know exactly what I'm even going to call this video or anything yet, but I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing my baby cat geckos and kind of seeing how I care for them. I just want to put it out there that cat geckos are absolutely fantastic geckos and if you are someone out there who's into reptiles and you like lizards, I would highly recommend looking into cat geckos. I really think that they're an incredible species that often gets overlooked by a lot of hobbyists, so I would love to see some more cat gecko love out there. 
and you know especially now that I am breeding cat geckos and I know there are some other people out there breeding cat geckos I would love to see people getting some captive bred cat geckos you know that that's the ultimate goal like I mentioned earlier I don't have any babies for sale right at this moment but I will certainly have some babies for sale in the future once they are a bit older and I can sex them so if you are interested in any cat geckos then make sure you stick around anyways with all of that said and done I'm going to go ahead and end the video here thank you all so much for watching I do truly appreciate it and I really hope that you enjoyed it if you did enjoy this video please be sure to give it a big thumbs up it really helps me out and it costs you nothing and also be sure to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already once you do all that also be sure to check out all of my social media you can find me on Instagram TikTok, Twitter all of those fun places I would love to have you guys there so make sure you follow me at MSM 99 that will all be in the description down below and with all that said I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this up now thank you all so much for watching I do truly appreciate it and I I will see you all in my next video.